welcome, welcome to our 12th, can you believe it's been 12th anniversary of the Naffy Top Companies for Executive Women. We are so excited to see you here today. And today we are going to be honoring our winners, our winning companies. And if you are from a winning company, give me a big hoot and holler right now. If our daughters are to claim their leadership, if they are to make their mark, if they are to make the difference that their God-given talents promise, it is the women you will see on stage today, the women of the NAFI Top Companies for Executive Women, who better than anyone will show them how. And so we thank you for your leadership. I think one of the events in the early stages of my career that helped propel me to where I am now is when I was asked to take a completely different job from any role I had had before. It was leading operations and IT for a division of Bell South, and I had never had experience in uh, IT or a publishing operation. And so when I stepped into this role, the company was going through a massive IT transformation, changing out the fundamental system that ran the business, and they were in trouble. And so I was asked to come in and help lead them through the transition. So as I sat around the table every day with 40 experts in the business, uh, day after day after day, I kept thinking, I don't know how to solve this problem. I don't know how, to, I've never done this before. I don't know how to solve this problem. I was, every night I went home with this angst about, I have to solve this problem. And one night I finally said, this isn't getting us anywhere. These are people who have done this for so long and they can't think differently about the business. They don't have the ability to think differently about how to solve this problem. So when I came in the next day, rather than trying to bring solutions myself, I started asking smart questions. And I started saying, why are we doing it that way? Well, why have we always done it that way? Well, what happens if we change this? What happens if we change that? And um, that led to the complete breakthrough solution that got us through the transformation. And that was pivotal for me because what it taught me is I don't always have to have the answers. In fact, the higher you go in an organization, the less the leader actually has the answers. The leader has to just be smart enough to be able to uncover the, the answers and know the right answer when they hear it. As I look back on my career, uh, the one thing that I see so clearly that I would do differently now is I would step up and ask for what I wanted. Uh, when I was moving through my career, I always had the view that if I stayed heads down, did great work, that work was going to get noticed and someone was going to come tap me on the shoulder and tell me what my next role would be. That happened a lot for me in my career, but there were times it, it didn't happen as fast as it could have. And uh, I went through a period of time where I was in uh, at the same level and wasn't advancing. And when I finally took the next step, was offered a promotion to the next level, my new boss said to me, you know, I never knew that you wanted a job like this or you would have had it a long time ago. And it was such a revelation to me because I thought, you know, what a clear example of if I hadn't asked for this role, I wouldn't have been promoted into it. And I should have been asking all along. And I think you don't always get what you ask for, certainly, but if you never ask, people don't know what you're interested in doing and you just don't get on people's radars. I uh, am very passionate about uh, talking with young women who are entering the workforce today because I think that they come into the workforce with a tremendous amount of energy and passion and ambition. In fact, studies show that women enter the workforce with just as much ambition as men and they aspire to be CEOs in equal proportions to men. So there's no shortage of ambition when women, when women enter the workforce. But what happens to women is that they, as they reach various milestones in their lives, as they start to think about getting married, and then once they're married, their husband's career is advancing, and then they start to think about having children, they become less eager to keep leaning forward and taking high-risk, high-profile assignments that allow them to accelerate and advance through the business. So I think the biggest challenge for women coming into the workforce today is to recognize that you can have a career, you can have it all, not all at the same time, but don't believe that just because you're your personal life will at some point revolve around, don't assume that at some point your personal life will revolve around your husband's career. 
keep thinking about the options that exist for women even who have uh, families and children to continue to contribute in the workforce. More and more of the households in this country are dual income households and I think we need women to believe that they can have a great career and keep pressing forward and find ways throughout their career to balance their family and their work life at the same time.